In this video, I'll be looking at some of the uh, major or most common misconceptions or mistakes that students will make in the GCSE Biology uh, exam. So here we'll start with B1. So one of the most common things that I can see when mocking students' uh, tests or mocks in the GCSE Biology spec is that they mix up cytoplasm, chloroplast, and chlorophyll. Now, this is part of this is the aspect of have you actually revised properly or have you learned the content well enough? So cytoplasm is the liquid gel that makes up the cell. So every single cell would have cytoplasm because that's literally the essence or the key crucial part that makes up the existence of a cell. Uh, the function-wise, it will be the site of chemical reactions. So lots of things um, in terms of uh, digestion or whatever or other things will happen within the cytoplasm. One specific example that you'll probably know would, would be for um, the anaerobic respiration. So the incomplete breakdown of glucose would happen in the cytoplasm, not in the mitochondria. Chloroplast, on the other hand, is the site for photosynthesis. So it only exists in plants and some bacterial cells who, which are also able to do photosynthesis, but not in animal cells. So that's one major difference as well. Chlorophyll is the green pigment that is uh, found within chloroplasts. So they absorb sunlight or absorb light in general to do photosynthesis. So that's uh, the key thing. So make sure you're clear that this is cytoplasm, the liquid gel, chloroplast, which is the name of the organelle that is found in the plants, and chlorophyll is the pigment that is found within chloroplast. So don't think that they, they cannot be used interchangeably. A second mistake that people often make is uh, mixing up cell membrane and cell wall or not knowing uh, where they are actually found in a cell. So I mentioned earlier um, that one of the crucial things that make up a cell is cytoplasm and cell membrane is another one. Every single cell would have a cell membrane because that's what contains the cytoplasm and all of the other organelles inside a cell. Again, without a cell membrane or if the cell membrane is broken, then you got a broken cell, a dead cell. So the membrane, the key function is that it is uh, it, it controls what goes in and out. So it's what we call selectively permeable. It chooses, it selects what can go in and out. Not everything can go in or go out from the cell membrane. The cell wall, on the other hand, is only found in plant cells and bacterial cells. So not in animal cells. Uh, another key thing is people often uh, mix up is thinking which one's on top. The cell membrane is the thin membrane, the thin layer inside, and the cell wall is outside of the membrane. It surrounds the membrane, uh, sometimes acting as a protective uh, mechanism or protective layer to keep the shape of the cell. Uh, the other difference is that the fact that they are fully permeable, so they're not selectively permeable. Anything can go through the cell wall. But in most cases, even though the toxins, for example, can go through the cell wall, but they would not be allowed to go through the cell membrane into the cell. Uh, another thing to be aware of is that the cell wall in plant cells are made of cellulose. This is often an overlooked uh, key detail in the spec, uh, but please do make sure that you know that it is made of cellulose and not, uh, and not, just, not just be unaware of what it's made of. So a third mistake or misconception that people have is about the sperm cell's uh, adaptation. Often people like to say it's got a streamlined body or a streamlined head, um, that is not an acceptable answer in the mock scheme in most exam papers. So please avoid saying streamlined body or head. If you want to say about how it can help it swim, then use saying the fact that they have a tail. That will be that would suffice. That would be enough. Another thing is about uh, describing or explaining how the sperm cell can actually get to the egg, get into the egg, and allow the DNA to mix. I've seen this before about saying how that they have a very hard head to break through the surface of the egg. That is again not true. It's just a cell without a cell wall and even if it does have a cell wall it doesn't mean that it's hard. It doesn't have anything that makes it hard. So but instead the way that they can do it is by uh, because they have an acrosome which is a little pouch in the front uh, in, in the head of the sperm that contains digestive enzymes. So what happens is when the sperm gets to the egg it will release these digestive enzymes from the acrosome onto the surface of the egg uh, of the egg cell, and then that digestive, those digestive enzymes will then break down the surface of the egg cell. Again, be very careful, don't say breaking down this egg cell wall, because remember, egg cell is an animal cell, they do not have cell walls. So be very careful when you're phrasing your uh, uh, answer. 
Another uh, possible or uh, very good adaptation to mention is about the fact that they have lots of mitochondria. That means that they can do lots of aerobic respiration, having lots of energy to allow it to swim. So generally, those are the first three misconceptions or mistakes that people often make in an exam, and they're specifically about cell structure. And this next part, it will be focusing on cell transport, so like diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. So the first one is about, you know, distinguishing between diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Uh, very basic things, again, things that hopefully you are very aware of when you're doing revision already in the first place. Diffusion is about down the concentration gradient, and they don't use energy. Osmosis, it's down the water concentration gradient. If you just say that down the concentration gradient, keep in mind that a very concentrated solution would mean having very little water. So uh, it, it actually works in the opposite way. So just to avoid confusion, say down the water concentration gradient as part of your description. Again, it doesn't use energy. Active transport is against the concentration gradient. So don't use the word across or anything like that. Just use, make sure you use the word against. And because it's against the concentration gradient, therefore they use energy. So key thing is it's down the water concentration gradient and it's against the concentration gradient in in these two particular uh, mechanisms. The next bit is about osmosis and specifically the different types of solutions. One thing to keep in mind when describing the types of solutions that are in these uh, or surrounding these particular cells is to remember that the concentration is comparative. We are always only comparing the amount of water or amount of con uh, solute inside and out of the cell. So you can't just say that a dilute solution is hypotonic because dilute means that it has lots of water, but hypo means that comparatively it has lots of water. So be very careful when phrasing your answers. Isotonic solution is relatively straightforward. Iso means the same. Uh, so meaning that if the cell is in an isotonic solution, then uh, the solution around it has the same concentration as inside the cell or this, the cytoplasm ha is of the same concentration as outside the cell. So to, again, it depends on where the solution is inside or out of the cell. More confusion comes in when it's about hypo and hypertonic solution. So if we start with hypertonic solution, if you describe someone as being very hyper and that usually means they're very energetic. And the reason why they would be energetic is because they maybe let's say they had a sugar rush. So they have just had a chocolate bar, they have lots of sugar and their body is naturally burning it away. They have lots of energy hyper. So think about hypertonic solution as having lots of sugar or perhaps a much higher solute concentration than somewhere else. So that's what it is. Hypotonic solution is the exact opposite. Hypo means low. So a hypotonic solution means it has a lower solute concentration than whatever it is. Again, emphasizing the fact that it is comparative, lower or higher. So make sure that you include the ER in your answer. Then finally, the last misconception about B1 is between osmosis and mitosis. Now it seems silly, to think that this is a misconception, however, it really is. And part of the reason is because people don't actually, or they haven't learned the stuff properly, and they just thought a question came up and they just blindly put something that sounds vaguely similar because they both end with osis. Please, please, please don't do that, right? Osmosis is the mechanism for water movement down the water concentration gradient. So it's about water movement. Mitosis is completely and utterly unrelated uh, thing. It's a cell division which makes two genetically identical daughter cells. We'll talk more about mitosis in chapter two. But they are completely unrelated, even though they end with the same stuff. Please make sure you don't mix them up. On that note, we might as well talk about mitosis and meiosis as well. They're both cell division, so yes, there is a link there, but mitosis makes two genetically identical daughter cells, so in some sense, it's cloning. Meiosis, on the other hand, makes four gametes, which and all four of them would be genetically uh, different. So gametes are sex cells, so like sperm cells and egg cells are made from meiosis or made by meiosis. So make sure you know the difference between the two. And also, these are some of the rarer situations where spelling does really matter. Uh, you have to be very clear on knowing how to spell it, because I've seen people spelling it in a very different way. They spell it as this, and you will definitely not get the mark, because it's unclear which one you're talking about. Even though it sounds like mitosis, 
but you seem to be implying that it's meiosis as well. So if you do that, they will not definitely not give you the mark. So be very careful with spelling in this case. And these are the common misconceptions or mistakes made by students for specifically uh, cell transport. And that's everything for uh, B1.